Hello all. Today we would be discussing World Trade Organization and relationship of India. As we have done it already, what is World Trade Organization? It signifies the reality of the globalization of the economy. In an interplay of trade and commerce in a global village, World Trade Organization is said to be the referee. Economies, small, medium and big, all have a role to play, each important in its own way, in shaping the global economy for the prosperity of all the nations. It was created for the liberalization of international trade. It came into existence on January 1, 1995 as the successor to General Agreement of Trades and Tariffs, that is GATT. World Trade Organization deals with the rules of trade between nations at a global level. It is responsible for implementing new trade agreements. All the member countries have to follow the trade agreements as decided by World Trade Organization. What are the benefits of WTO? It helps promote peace and prosperity across the globe. Disputes are settled amicably. The rules bring about greater discipline in trade negotiations, thereby reducing inequalities to a large extent. Free trade reduces the cost of living and increases household income. Companies have greater access to markets and consumers have wide range of products to choose from. Good governance accelerates economic growth. What has been the relation of India and World Trade Organization? India is one of the founding members of WTO along with more than 130 other countries. Economists believe that India's participation in an increasingly rule-based system in governance of international trade would eventually lead to better prosperity for the nation. Various trade disputes of India with other nations have been settled through WTO. India has also played an important part in the effective formulation of major trade policies. By being a member of WTO, several countries are now trading with India and hence they are giving a boost to the production, employment, standard of living and an opportunity to maximize the use of the world resources. Only in the middle of uh, December 2011, the 8th Ministerial Conference of World Trade Organization was held in Geneva, Switzerland. India was represented at the meeting by the Union Minister for Commerce, Industry and Textiles, Mr. Anand Sharma. The conference deliberated on key trade issues on the following themes, like importance of multilateral trading system and WTO, trade and development, Doha development agenda, and prior to the WTO meet, ministers of BRICS met to discuss issues concerning trade and development among themselves. What is the BRICS group? Brazil, India, China, South Africa and Russia. It is increasingly being recognized as being pivotal in furthering progress in stalled Doha round. At the WTO conference, India emphasized the key role of the world trade body in keeping protectionist forces at bay. It also told the conference that international trade will play an even more critical role in stimulating economic growth and development during the current global slowdown. In his speech, Mr. Sharma highlighted the WTO's its central role in monitoring the implementation of multilateral trade disciplines. To the BRICS members, he pointed out that the four-nation grouping is uniquely positioned at the cusp of the developing and the developed world. On one hand, for historical reasons, we are home to a large population of the poor in the world. On the other, our people have demonstrated resilience in responding to the demands of the changing times. He rightly said that BRICS would be both a rallying point and a bridge between developed and developing nations. Also, no doubt there is concern at the existing impasse in Doha development round. But BRICS is committed 
to remaining fully engaged in negotiations with a view to concluding the single undertaking within the shortest possible time frame. India, for its part, is keen that negotiations must be based on the multilaterally agreed mandates and on the delicate balance of trade-offs achieved over the last 10 years. No wonder India appealed to all WTO members not to allow the development dimension of special treatment to least developed countries to be sidelined and pledged to work together to resist the moves to change the agenda and the discourse at the WTO. At the WTO meet, India clearly spelt out its position on some of the new ideas that have been proposed in Geneva World Trade Organization round as a possible way forward. Ruling out any freezing of the customs duties at the current levels, that is, tariffs, they stand still. India pointed out that this amounted to the developing countries ceding their policy space and being denied any recognition for their autonomous liberalization. Besides unhinging the negotiated formula on tariff reductions, it would force the developing countries to take on commitments going much beyond what was envisaged for at the end of the Doha round. Similarly, on the issue of export restrictions on the agricultural products, any dilution of the flexibilities available under the WTO regime for imposing export restrictions in taxes was unacceptable. It was imperative that the WTO, while taking up all manner of new challenges, does not forget the traditional challenges of development. India called for continued solidarity and reinvigorated engagement so that the current impasse in Doha negotiations are broken and the attempts to replace the development-centric agenda are thwarted. It cautioned against the possibility of losing the progress and the balance achieved so painstakingly over the last decade, particularly on the reforms of the agricultural trading system. The global community should not allow this opportunity to slip away or allow a dilution of Doha mandate. It is the responsibility of both developing and developed countries to evolve a common position on the way forward on the Doha development agenda. India views WTO as an institution which ensures a level playing field in global trade flows and creates a paradigm of equitable and inclusive growth. India is emphatic that urgent steps should be taken to usher in much delayed changes in the current agricultural trading regime, which was negatively impact the livelihood, uh, the livelihood concerns of billions of subsist subsistence farmers in the developing world. The WTO ministers coordinated their positions on the important aspects of agricultural trade, including the large trade distorting subsidies doled out by the developed countries and agreed on preserving the centrality of development as the core agenda. While unequivocally expressing its desire to bring this round to a balanced conclusion, India underlined the need to keep the negotiating process transparent and inclusive. The meet articulated India's strong commitment to the issues affecting the least developed countries and the small and vulnerable economies that have hitherto remained marginalized from the global trading regime. India is of the view that the smaller and poorer nations cannot be left behind and thus it was incumbent upon all member states to accord highest priority to the concerns of least developed countries. It must be recalled that India has already shown the way with its unilateral grant of duty-free market access to a large number of products from the least developed countries as early as in 2008. To be sure, 
India urged the WTO members, particularly the developed ones, to follow suit and redeem the promise made to the poorest members of the global community six years ago at Hong Kong. This obligation needs to be fulfilled without any further delay. In this context, the role of G33 group of ministers must be acknowledged for protecting the development dimension of the round through its efforts to obtain satisfactory outcomes on certain critical elements of agricultural negotiations that provide for special and different treatment for the developing countries. These special and differential provisions balance out the commercial interests of developed countries and are essential to protect the livelihood interests of the small and marginal farmers in the developing world for whom agriculture is not an issue of trade but of livelihood and existence. The minister also addressed a gathering of over 100 country delegates of G90 developing countries. The unique grouping of over 100 countries called the Friends of Development reaffirmed their commitment to the centrality of development in Doha round and the need to keep negotiations transparent and inclusive. An overwhelming majority of World Trade Organization membership present in this meeting have sent out a message with clarity to take forward the Doha development agenda without deviating or diluting the core of the round. India at this meeting rightly expressed concern that new approaches were being suggested risking the multilateral tradition of WTO. India is again firm that the round must ensure a just and equitable regime which corrects the distortions of history. In this context, it came as no surprise that at the inaugural plenary of ministerial conference, India made a strong pitch against protectionism. India was of the view that in the backdrop of global economic downturn, all countries must eschew protectionism, which can only be counterproductive as it will deepen the recession and delay the recovery. There was a need to respect the mandate and built on the progress already achieved. India expressed strong reservation about recent suggestions for negotiating agreements among a critical mass of members and cautioned that this path was fraught with risk as they lacked the inbuilt checks and balances of multilateral agreements. India also lost the risk, uh, the uh, assess the importance of strengthening the WTO especially in light of the new forms of protectionism that adversely affected developing countries. It urged members to get multilateral trade deal done not only for the trade liberalization and rule building but also for the credibility of multilateral trading system. Plurilateral trading arrangements among a few cannot substitute the multilateral system and are also against the spirit of fundamental WTO principles of transparency and inclusiveness. In a reference to the gradual shift away from the development agenda, India pointed out that trade cannot flourish if the interests of over three-fourths of the world's population are held hostage to the commercial interests of the few that already command global trade. Significantly, India has invited key interlocutors of developed and developing countries for an informal discussion on the way forward. India conveyed strong reservations on proposals which seek to get global trade agreements 
involving only a small number of WTO members. Plurilateral agreements are a throwback to the days when decisions taken by a few determine the future of the rest. As the Doha round talks continues to linger for almost 10 years now, suggestions are being made by rich countries like US that the key members of developed and developing groupings can sit in smaller groups and work out deals, a move being vehemently opposed by India. India was open to considering new issues within the mandates of the regular WTO organs as long as these are discussed in inclusive and transparent manner. India said the countries which were once harbingers of free trade had themselves started looking inwards. Protectionist measures must be resisted by all WTO members and the multilateral institutions must be strengthened. In the challenging backdrop of global economic downturn, all countries must eschew protectionism which can only be counterproductive as it would deepen the recession and delay the recovery. The need of the hour was enhanced economic engagement and free flow of trade. The global community must maintain the spirit of multilateralism and the WTO has stood as bulwark against a rising tide of protectionism. India also rejected proposals of some developed nations to freeze customs duties at current levels, taking away rights to ban farm exports as a possible way forward on WTO talks, saying that if accepted, it would tantamount to ceding sovereign rights. Any dilution of the flexibilities available under the WTO regime for imposing export restrictions on agricultural items and taxes was unacceptable. The WTO negotiations have been stalled due to differences between rich and developing nations on tariff liberalization and level of market opening. Agreeing to tariff standstills means a drastic reduction in duties by developing countries like India as the country's applied customs duties is below bound ceiling levels. To augment domestic supplies, India has banned exports of pulses and also imposed quantitative restrictions on outward shipments of commodities like rice and sugar. Besides, India is planning to bring a food security law under which nearly 64% of its population will have legal entitlement on subsidized food grains. India is open to considering new issues within the mandates of regular WTO organs as long as these are discussed in inclusive and transparent manner. India's firm view is that the world is not static, nor are the challenges and issues that affect global trade. What has been the impact of WTO on India? The services exports account for 40% of India's total exports of goods and services. The contribution of services to India's GDP is more than 55%. The sector, that is domestic and exports, provides employment to around 142 million people comprising 28% of the workforce of the country. India's exports are mainly in IT and IT-enabled sectors, travel and transport and financial sectors. The main destinations are US that is the share is 33%, to European Union it is 15% and other developed countries. India has an obvious interest in the liberalization of services, trade and wants commercially meaningful access to be provided by the developed countries. Since the Uruguay round, India has autonomously liberalized its services trade regime across the board. India's interest in services lies in the large pool of trained, qualified, experienced manpower 
providing services by temporarily moving to provide services and then returning to India. The trade in mode 4 accounts for only a minuscule 1% of global trade at the moment. India has asked for a commitment from the developed countries in mode 4, that is in IT and IT-enabled services, engineering services, health services, as well as education services. The other manner in which India can deliver services is by the way of remote supply of services with improved connectivity and vast pool of professionals in various services sectors. That is mode 1. It includes outsourcing, business process outsourcing, etc. Global trade in mode 1 accounts for only 18% of the global trade. The major concern for India in the area of services is that the markets for services in the large economies are not sufficiently open, particularly in the respect of labor and labor related services. Furthermore, in order to realize effective access in larger markets, there is a need to ensure that predictable and transparent disciplines are put in place for domestic regulations so that they are not abused to deny access or to create barriers. One of the primary objectives of WTO was to substantially reduce the distortions that have plagued global agricultural markets caused primarily through subsidies and protection by the developed countries. Discussions in WTO are aimed at reducing subsidies in developed countries and protection in developing countries. Although the negotiations in Doha round made a serious attempt to reduce farm subsidies, little progress has been made towards the end, this end in real terms. Besides reduction in high level of farm subsidies, developing countries seeking market access have been seeking reduction in tariffs on agricultural commodities. The focus of the market access negotiations in agriculture has been on reduction in non ad valorem tariffs that has been used in good measure by a number of developed countries. Protection of intellectual property rights that is patents, copyrights, trademarks etc. has been made stringent. It is argued that trade related intellectual property rights that is TRIPS agreement goes against the Indian Patents Act 1970. Only process patents can be granted in food, chemicals and medicines under the India Patents Act. TRIPS agreement provides for granting product patents as well. Under TRIPS, patents can be granted to methods of agriculture and horticulture, biotechnological process including living organisms like plants and animals. The duration of patents during TRIPS is uh, under TRIPS is 20 years. Introduction of product patents in India will lead to hike in drug prices by the MNCs who have the product patent. This will hit the poor people who will not have the generic option available. The extension of intellectual property right to agriculture has negative effect on India. Presently, plant breeding and seed production are largely in the public domain. Indian scientists have undertaken plant breeding and multiplications in the hands of national and state seed corporations. Government, through this machinery, provides seeds to Indian farmers at a very low price. Indian scientists in future will find it extremely difficult to breed new varieties and Indian research institutions will be unable to compete financially with multinational corporations and will be denied access to patented genetic material. MNCs will get the control over or genetic resources and as such the control over food production would be jeopardized. The most important thing for India to address are speed up internal reforms in building up world class infrastructure like roads, ports and electricity supply. India should also focus on original knowledge generation in important fields like pharmaceuticals, 
molecules, textiles, IT high-end products, processed food, installation of gold chain and agricultural logistics to top opportunities uh, to tap the opportunities of globalization under WTO regime. India's ranking in recent global competitiveness report is not very encouraging due to infrastructural problems, poor governance, poor legal system and poor market access provided by India. Our tariffs are still high compared to developed countries and there will be pressure to reduce them further and faster. India has solid strength at least for medium term that is 5 to 7 years in services sector primarily in IT which should be tapped and further strengthened. India would do well to reorganize its protective agricultural policy in the name of rural poverty and food security and try to capitalize on globalization of agricultural markets. It should rather focus on textile industry modernization and developing international market muscle and expertise, um, developing of brand India image, use its traditional arts and designs intelligently to give competitive edge, capitalize on drug sector opportunities and develop selective engineering sectors, industries like automobiles and forgings and castings, processed food industry and the high-end outsourcing services. It won't be a bad idea if Indian textile and garment industry go multinational settling their foot in Western Europe, North Africa, Mexico and other such strategically located areas for large US and European markets. Therefore, India must improve legal and administrative infrastructure, improve trade facilitation through cutting down bureaucracy and delays. Corruption will also have to be checked by bringing in fast remedial public grievance system, legal system and information dissemination by using e-governance. So this has been the impact of WTO on India and the vital steps India should be taking if it wants to be at the level playing field with US and Europe. These are the references. Thank you for listening.